I was raised in a family that was proud to be open-minded, to be very tolerant. Um, I remember that we were taught, uh, already as small children, to not use discriminatory languages. I also remember that we even spoke about homosexual men. And still, it took me 19 years and the help of a friend that I realized that the love I had for women was not just a passing phase in my life, but that there was something that I had to reconsider. When I was a child, I thought, I will get married, uh, I will have kids, I will keep the household for a male husband. So um, even though I was raised in a tolerant environment, um, it's still very important to have role models. I think I didn't know lesbians or I wasn't aware that the women that I knew were lesbians. I have lived my life in my home country as a second-class citizen. We are still considered second-class citizens. Um, there is no um, marriage equality, for example. My marriage to my wife is not considered a marriage. It's considered a domestic partnership. And um, equal but different. So my home country did everything to make sure that they had to develop a whole um, set of new laws just for us, something special. And um, this is really offensive. So did this shape my look, my perspective on life, on the society? Yes, it did. It's um, like being a woman. Um, for example, uh, my mom was not able to vote um, until I was 14. Um, I was lucky that when I was 20, I had equal vote right. Um, so it shapes the way we look at the world. It shapes the way that we experience the world. And probably it also shaped my commitment to human rights. Today, I'm, I'm really very pleased that uh, the efforts of UN Globe have um, succeeded in having the Secretary General uh, issue a, a new Secretary General bulletin um, endorsing all official marriages, partnerships that are um, officiated by a governmental authority. And this will have hopefully an impact on individual lives of colleagues who come from a country that are um, privat of these equal rights and um, so on the have an impact on the individual lives of my colleagues and I also hope that it may contribute to um, change of attitude if the United Nations as the organization of human rights um, considers that um, marriages between gay and lesbians is equal to any kind of marriage, it might uh, have an impact, hopefully. Become an advocate for human rights. You don't have to be gay or straight, uh, gay or lesbian or transgender or intersex or whoever. You can be a so-called um, straight, family, dead, um, but a champion for human rights. So use the International Day of Human Rights, 10 of December. Um, draft a message for your resident coordinator, for your office director, to be sent out to your staff members to just raise awareness that we still have issues around the globe and within the UN. Uh, celebrate Human Rights Day. Celebrate um, the International Day against homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia. Um, create a group of friends of, and colleagues of uh, LGBTI uh, colleagues. Do whatever you feel comfortable. And I think if you become a co uh, an advocate and a champion for human rights, people will come forward and trust you. Um, you can also use the anti-stigma campaign material. This is a stigma-free uh, office. and. Um, I'm free of, of stigma, so everybody can come and talk to me. 
if with your actions, if with your statements as a UN staff member, you make obvious that you are inclusive. And I think then I will, I might even in a, in a situation where um, being gay or lesbian is still a, a, a dead sentence, um, I might dare to come forward and ask you whether you want to be a closer colleague or I can maybe come forward and share with you that I have an issue. I was reluctant to participate in this video. Two reasons. First, the reason is, can I really believe the UN system that each and every manager who will make hiring decisions is free of bias, discrimi discrimination? So I needed, again, the help of a friend who said, come on, let's try and do it. The second thing that I would like to add is, why is diversity so important? Diversity can be a strength. Diversity has something to do with the way you live your life. Being part of a discriminated group or of two discriminated groups, a woman and a lesbian, has certainly shaped my life. And it has shaped my perspective on problems, on solutions, on whatever. So being more inclusive when it comes to finding solutions for problems that we uh, encounter is really important. So it's not only to make lives of discriminated people easier, but it's also, I think, for the benefit of the whole world that we are more inclusive when it comes to finding solutions for our problems.